Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to factor trinomials, but a particular kind. In this video I'm going to show you how to do a trinomial where the leading term has a coefficient that's something other than 1. Remember, it's also known as the bottoms up method. And I have my good friend and colleague in the math department who showed me how to do this particular method. But anyway, uh, so again, let me just briefly review what you do when you look at trinomials, okay? You always ask yourself the question, uh, are there any common factors to, any, uh, to each of the three terms? And if there is, you factor it out. And then these next three questions, you really can ask in any order you want. But um, I usually tend to ask them in this order. Sometimes I'll ask the fourth one, you know, second. But this one always comes first, common factors. Then after that, you just ask these three, okay? And then you recognize them according to what the question's asking. So let's look at this first one, okay? Where the leading coefficient is a number other than 1. Now remember, the leading coefficient is the number in front of the x squared in the uh, leading term, okay? So notice we have a, um, a number that's 3, a coefficient that's 3. Now with the bottoms-up method, you can do a couple things. You can start guessing combinations of 3 and 6 that add up to 11. That's one way of doing it, right? And you have a whole bunch of possibilities that you just start putting down the side. Or you can just follow the bottoms up method, which is a four-step method, okay? And, and you get the right answer every single time, if it's factorable. Now, let me show you how it's done. What you do is you take the leading coefficient and you multiply the constant. So you end up with x squared plus 11x plus, in this case, 18. Now what happens here is you factor this just like you did where the leading coefficient was 1. Okay, So you ask yourself, what are the factors of 18 that add up to 11? All right, so you start with 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and you see right away that 2 and 9 add up to 11. So it's a plus 2 and a plus 9. So go ahead and put in plus 2 plus 9, and then take the square root of the x squared, and then you get that. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Since you multiplied by 3, now you divide by 3, because you can't just multiply this by 3 and expect it to remain symmetrical, right? So now you go ahead and divide by 3, and you divide the, the numbers at the, at the back end by, the, uh, by whatever you multiplied with. So if this were a 2, you'd divide by 2. If this were a 6, you would divide by 6, okay? Now you treat each one of these individually, and you say, can I reduce 2 over 3? If you can't, you leave it in the lowest terms, you take the denominator and you bottoms up. So I would write that as 3x plus 2. With this one, it reduces to a nice simple whole number, in this case, 3. And that is your answer. Now how do you know that's your answer? Again, you do the smiley faced um, check, right? So do the 2 there, the 2 there. 3x times 3 is 9x, 2x times 2 is 2x, and it adds up to 11x. Excuse me, the original problem. So these are your, this is your factored form. And this works every time. It works every single time. Let's try another problem. Okay, that's, and see what it comes up with. So, again, leading coefficient is something other than 1, and there's no factors that I can factor out that's common, right? So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 5 times 2, and you end up with x squared minus 7x plus 10. So, what are the factors of 10 that add up to negative 7? And again, you just do this to the side. You go 2 and 5. Up, oh, there's a 7, especially if I make both of these negative. I get negative 10 when I multiply them, uh, excuse me, positive 10 when I multiply, negative 7 when I add them. So again, you just put in the signs the way they appear there. So minus 2, minus 5. Take the square root of the 
leading term. And remember that when you multiplied by 5, now you divide by 5. So divide by 5 there. And now you reduce. x minus 5 over 5 is just 1. And there you go. You got that one. Now this one is in simplest terms already, so you bring the bottom up. And you end up with 5x minus 2. Now again, let's just go ahead and uh, check this with a smiling face. And let's see if it adds up correctly. That gives me negative 2x. That gives me negative 5x. Add that up, you get negative 7x. Sure enough, there's your answer. Okay, so that's the factored form. Bottoms up is really good. There is actually a mathematical proof that I saw uh, that proves why this works. And um, if I find it, I'll go ahead and show you on a different video. So again, just to go through the steps, look for the leading coefficient. Make sure that there's nothing common first. First question, right? Then go ahead, if the leading coefficient is something other than 1, multiply the last number, factor it like it's a regular leading term with a coefficient of 1. So you ask yourself, what are the factors of that that add up to that? Go ahead and now divide by whatever number you multiplied by, and then reduce as much as possible. If it doesn't reduce, you bring the bottom up. If it does reduce, you leave it alone. Okay, I hope that was helpful.